your early bands, no nicks, no worry about mana burn, there's no real room for an invoker to come out with EMP, there's no PL on hand to swarm her with illusions with defusal burn, so it's really protected as a first phase pick. They've got this Leshrac on mid to help them push towers, they've got so much magic damage to deal with a Terrorblade, that I'm really worried for, uh, for Gabby here. <laughs> I just realized Gabby's chosen emblem on his name for the team supporter pack is actually SMG. <laughs> so it, it kind of looks awkward when you look at him. <laughs> but right. yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit like awkward for Gabby. It's a very hard we game for a like Terrorblade. Like like there's we still opportunities. Like We've seen Terrorblade we'll re like reduces before, be like but it's much more <laughs> tight. The timings he has to play around is a lot tighter. They have to maximize Metamorphosis down the line a lot better. And SMG have just much more leeway to play this game as they want here. You, you gotta love the mutual respect between <laughs> Gabby and uh, and KP. Uh, obviously, Gabby having a very tough time because of KP last game around. It just felt like every Krona that was thrown out, uh, you'd see the tornado being thrown out by KP just to kind of ruin it. And there you go. They're just having a bit of a bit of back and forth between the two. EK persona. They've got Davion. Yeah, it's looking good. Right, like uh, last time around, we saw TNT with a Spectre. They had the Arcana. Maybe the key thing is to have these new cosmetics on hand. That gives TNT the motivation they need to win these games. This could this could be the turning point. I know. Like the one thing with the DK persona, though, the helmet kind of makes it hard to read. I prefer him without the helmet. So there is that. But look at SMG. They smoked up. They did this in before, and if they get a good wrap around here, they've got a lot of stuns, a lot of damage on hand. Yeah, I really like this move, but this time around, Tim's he's going to be around to make sure he breaks the smoke. They'll spot him out and get a nice shards out. And with the Earth Spike, they might have enough control to get another stun out from Moon. And with that, they'll give the first one over to the left track. Another great start out of SMG. They're giving that that first blood gold to Moon. It's going to ensure a very quick bottle for him and life very, very hard for Armel on the puck. Be pretty awkward for Armel, like the puck versus Leshrac matchup can go either way. You have stable wave clear on both sides, but you have to be cautious about overstepping your bounds to puck here. If an earth split, split earth does land, the follow up damage can be pretty annoying. And of course, you have to always control your lane. Once a creep wave shoves in just a bit for Moon, you can look to play with Edict once that's up and just constantly apply chip damage. And you might find yourself losing your mid tier one earlier than you want to. So we're having a look up at the top lane where KP It's a nice double silence off. Abby already popping the metamorphosis and Boomy trying to be rather aggressive with the fire spirits, but it's like KP is going to be just fine to secure some CS for himself. It's KP going to have to be a little bit cautious every time that meta's off cooldown, but once it does wear off, I think KP should have a pretty darn good time with the Bloodseeker. Just being able to spam out the Blood Rite going to be very annoying for Gabby on that TB. None for you. That's just not going to feel good once you're stuck in that melee form for Gabby. I think the one saving grace here for TNC is that it's a dual melee lane. So Boomy has a little bit more impact to play around with his range advantage to play with the fire spirits once he gets some levels up. At the same time, Afu, he went for level one ice shard. He just tried to keep spamming that out and get hits on Gabby. And with the first up, you know, Gabby, he, he doesn't have much HP really relies on that armor to tank up and once you're low a blood secret just becomes a lot more potent in lane so you have to balance your hp here quite a fair bit for tnc's end we'll have a look at the bot lane as well roggy him's kind of going at it roggy let's avoid the stroke of fate just fine once you've got bok there the dk and you've got mid one once again on that harry medusa last game around they weren't able to shut down mid one at all on that medusa I wonder if this time they've got what it takes with this new draft from TNT to, to deal with mid one, but it seems like they're not going to be able to really give him the space that he had last time. If they do, if we see a repeat performance from mid one, it it is still a Medusa, and it's kind of like you said with the with the TB, it's not going to be that simple of a task to try and get through this Medusa. See what TNT does to try and shut him down this time. 
I'm looking at Box buildup. He did go for Dragon Tail and two points in Dragon Blood, so there's no real breed fire to prevent Mid One from applying his harassment with his right clicks, clearing out the Creep Wave. He's playing really nicely with the Mystic Snake. And this does allow you more aggression with Dragon Tail plus Inkswell, but you're not really seeing out there. Although Tim's chasing Raji. And he is, Roggy being caught out. Nice of a spike though, and mid one gonna be around to help out as Roggy does go for a nice salve up and Tim's is trapped between the creep wave and the trees and does end up going down. Very nice setup there from Roggy and it, it costs him a salve, but the end who the hell cares? He's gonna be just fine. Nice pickup. Um, it does get split up, so you're not too upset for TNC, but this lane's just going really well on bot. In fact, all the lanes for SMG feel like they're off to a really good start so far. Just managed to keep all these heroes in check. Gabby's not having the freest farm as well. And barely above the Dusa, which is decent, but KP's already getting enough space to just pull that lane solo. And um, Gabby, you know, when Metamorphosis is up, he can look to play aggressive, but not really looking to set up just yet and every single time blood right lands again you're a low hp hero high armor magic damage just makes it so annoying to hold that lane for gabby right aside lisa mills having a pretty good time in that mid lane of the park only top cs on the board must say moon not really that far behind either he's just all cs behind at the moment and with this wave he should be able to easily keep up with that puck Gonna be a lot on the shoulders of armel this game right like you are really requiring him to just make those rotations and set up these kills for tnc uh it's draft of smg and the way the lanes have gone it could be a very tough time if armel can't set up these kills yeah he needs to be active on that puck especially once he hits his level six level seven with the dream coil up you're gonna have to look for a nice pick off in the side lanes you do run the risk of giving your mid out you maybe want to play more passively instead. Just protect that mid, keep the lane at equilibrium to prevent a shove from the Lesh, but that just kind of runs the risk of letting these side lanes just fester for longer and just kind of give SMG too much to play with. So there's a lot of choices our melt's gonna have to make. At the least, he's slightly ahead of that Lesh rack right now. Uh, 34 to five up against 26 to one. You've got that early farm advantage on hand, and that does mean that he's not gonna look for that early push opportunity just yet. Bottom lane, Earth Spike is out. A Bok on that DK, and now with the shards and the tag team, it might just be enough to get through Bok's HP pulls the snowball. Give me that a follow up, but he's a very tanky DK. And we'll be able to back off as now Armel makes a rotation in. He only got one with the Dream Coil, but it will give him a kill. And immediately he's back off to the mid lane. That's uh, exactly what we needed to see from our mill. It takes a good opportunity for the rotation. He's going to get the rune up at the six minute mark, so he's going to be topped up. The creep wave was shoved out far enough that Moon couldn't really do much with the edict there. So the power is still standing at a fairly good amount of HP, and he gets that impact he wants early. It's not the biggest kill, but it does provide some relief on those side lanes, which TNT really needed. It's, like they're, it's just lining up all too nicely for SMG, and it at least makes uh, mid one tink twice about overextending in the lane, but you're still not quite stopping the Deucer from farming there. Well, not. Good now. He's screwing up on the left track, gonna make the rotation towards the top lane. That level three diabolic edict, but rather than trying to make something happen with that top tier Radiant's one tower, top he'll top take the stacks top. away just to ensure Gabby doesn't have a chance to himself. I mean, he does watch all this, but it won't matter because he can't do anything Radiant's about it. Middle tower is under attack. Immediately, Moon is going to go back towards that top lane as Arfu. He'll take over the mid lane in his stead. I mean, we're seeing this kind of really a play style from SMG, but it does kind of just pay off for them. They are still securing the farm they want. Now top lane, Boomy. Chased down by KP, does get spotted. KP not at that level 6 mark yet, so can't quite get the rupture off, but will force the Icarus dive away. That's going to allow Moon with the Diabolic Edict to get to work into that top tier 1. Still have Tims and Gabby around along with Boomy to try and defend this, and I think their presence may be enough. Now Moon, he's going to TP down to the bot lane. He's the only one there on the DK. They might just need plus one to lock him down. 
This Moon can land the Split Earth, but won't be able to get it this time. Instead, Rogi, he'll come in from the side. DP's cancelled off early, so he's already missing one here on the side of TNC. And now they're going to lose Bok. Oh, no, he does show up, but it is too late. They will get to work into that bottom T1 with the Diabolic Edict. Not really much Armel can do Dyer's about it. But he does get a very nice down. denial. And this is this is the momentum we were talking about from SMG. They've got such good push coming out with Lush, especially in comparison to the DK, that once you start losing these towers, TNC's map shrinks a lot more, and it expands for SMG. You get more space for mid one to feel safe, you get more uh, flash farm for the use of to hit those item spikes, and TNC's just in a really awkward position right now. Maybe. The wall does connect, but Arthur now wants to back off as Gabby. It's on the high ground with the meta, just ready to go. Mel will take a, another nice kill on the puck, second kill of the game for him on this bucket. He's still going relatively smoothly for both sides. Gabby just barely ahead of mid one on the Medusa. It is still about the mid lane matchup, right? It's still about Moon and Armel being able to set up, or set the pace for their team. So it looks like Arfu and Moon go for a smoke up. Question is, where are they headed? Radiant he might go for Gabby, but they're going to head towards attack. that top lane where KP does cancel off his TP and now goes for a rupture. Gabby, I think he's stuck there. He'll try to get out of vision. Arthur, uh, Snowball, not going to be there in time. We'll just roll the other ways. They'll go after Tim's instead. Blood right, not actually going to get the vision Radiant's as Tim's. He just ran straight top. south and they attack. haven't found him. Keep you safe. Tim's is somehow out of there. They're still Radiant's having a look around. Has fallen. For real? Not gonna spot him either. Tim's, he will survive. At top T1 oh. tower, probably not gonna be so lucky. SMG, they really wanted that kill. Gabby's still kind of given a lot of space here, all things considered, but we'll be able to find that top T1, so Armel's here. Well, now Armel, he's got a massive target there as Bonk. We're gonna try and help out with the Dragon Tail, and that should be enough to lock him down and get the damage out. SMG thought about jumping in but there's not really much they could have done that is a huge pickoff now for the side of tnc and kind of create a bit more space for them to be able to just secure that farm onto gabby and armel is under attack doing a good Dyer's job of just protecting the tv attack. they're not willing to play aggressively themselves onto the Dusa, so you're kind of trading farm and we're seeing mid one slowly catch up like the last hits are Money racking up the head. triangle is fairly protected there is a ward here from pnc to watch they're not really able to do as much with that information so i think overall you're still kind of happy on smg's end and it still kind of boils down to what you were saying the mid core matchup moon still needs to find some towers to melt for the edict mid tier one still standing top tier one still standing in that sense it's feeling pretty good for tnc they even out the bot lane push down the line so relatively even in map control I think that that serves to benefit tnc a little bit more considering that smg are the one with a bit more of a push advantage with the strat upshot top lane they've got bok they're very kind of tanky here to go after the, they're not Radiant's gonna just they're not gonna pursue it box just gonna stand there it'll be all right yeah, I'm still bringing heroes up here from SMD to try and set up for that push, but with the Grimstroke around on Tim's, it's proving to be a, a real challenge for the side of SMG. Boss doesn't even have the breathe fire up, but he just doesn't need it. Stand there hitting creeps. He's fine. It's uh, a lot more of a passive build, so he can't be as aggressive, but that doesn't matter when it means that SMG zone moves are not really panning out. TNC, knowing Rupture is down, they've got a bit of a spell advantage there and they're gonna look for a smoke play here. Yeah, oh no, gonna move on to the high ground. They'd love to find mid one and that's exactly who they do get as the ink swap does come in with the Sarms and with no mana shield. He will get blown up. Great set up there from the side of TNT and you look at Gabby. We'll join in that mid lane and they'll get started on that mid T1 tower push now with the metamorphosis. Immediately decided SMG, they need to try and get something done about this. You don't want that mid tier one tower to drop with a Medusa on your side. Dyer's one right. It'll be enough with the Lightning Storm spam. Here, TNC, they get the rotations they wanted. They won't overextend. Just back off and continue their farm up. 
think this is pretty darn good for TNC. They killed the Dusa, the one target we've been talking about that's an AFK farming. They make good use of that ward they planted earlier on. And they're pretty much protecting Gabby. Just sort of allowed to free farm, still above the Dusa, which is not where you want to be as the Dusa. Although, in terms of net worth, it's rather even in that end. And Gabby's gonna hit this spike once the SMY is up. So, they just need to hold steady here for TNC's part. They could wait for the next Dream Coil. It's gonna be up in 15. And they can look to play with Dream Coil Egg. Well, haven't seen the combo kick off. But you get these heroes from SMG in a really tight spot. It'd be a bit awkward for them to try to counter fight that. Maybe they could kind of turn it around if they're Leshrax in good position, but Moon only really has a Hood of Defiance to protect. No Yule up, doesn't look like he's rushing it as well. So all that damage flying through it could be a bit of an issue for Moon down the line if he's caught off guard. Certainly could. He's top of the net worth board here, Moon, so still having a great old time on the Leshrac. He said he's got the Sanj on the way very, very soon as... Seems like SMG, they're more than comfortable to play the farm game here with TNC. The real pressure being applied, although I say that top lane, they're gonna find our food. TNT, they'll get another kill for themselves onto Arno. He is fourth of the game, but mid one, he's gonna show up to make sure this top T1 stays defended. Was able with the Medusa this early on, just being able to spam Mystic Snake is gonna be enough to, to force the side of TNC back. TNT could keep just kind of making SMG run across the map defending towers, but SMG, they seem more than happy about it. They're, they're just fine with this. Yeah, it, in the end, I mean, it's still space out for the Dusa. They're not quite really trading objectives on either side. And again, it, it's a bit of a equal state for both teams. Yeah, where it's not swinging out too much. Attack. Map control is relatively the same. Both cores are farming up at, at a steady pace. The one thing that does line up to, though, is that I feel like a Terrorblade with equal amounts of farm with Dusa, at least at this point in the game, is going to have a bit more impact. It's just down to the fact that Metamorphosis is a lot stronger early, earlier on. The damage boost is huge. A Dusa needs so many more items to really hit that stride. And I think as long as TNT understands that the pressures would happen, would be good, although there's smoke broke. Well, KP's in trouble, though. He'll die to arm mill. He'll get the rupture up, but it won't matter. And meanwhile, on the other side of the map, they have started another team flight. This bomb is being focused down and eventually may go down. Be able to get him. He's trying to make a chase up to that high ground of the triangle, but it won't work out in their favor. The brighter side, though, considering they found KP at the bot lane, it's just a position three for a position three trade. And it doesn't seem like either team minds playing the farming game. These even trades seem to favor both teams in their own minds. Yeah, I don't blame them for thinking that way. They've gotten massive heroes to keep farming up on. I think that trade ends up a bit better for TNC because Armel basically gets that solo. SMG had the share of the speed. This is one you don't want to lose though, John. Mid one has been caught out. A nice earth spike and a Manta touch on the Inkswell. Very, very nice. Mid one, back into the triangle. He has no mana, but he'll be all right. They won't be able to chase him there. Except TNC. Radiance have to get started onto that mid T1 tower again. Radiance middle tower is I'm under SMG. attack. I'm SMG. They may not really be around to defend this one. As be a little bit too challenging with Armel and Bok around, and it looks like they are going to just let this one go Radiance down. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Uh, to tier 1 top for a tier 1 attack. mid favoring TNC just a bit more. That does give SMG a nice lane to threaten every single time. They plant a deep ward here on SMG's end in that top jungle area as well to keep track of where the terribly it's farming. But Armel, goodness, Armel. Really blowing up Roji. A Witch's Blade just makes it so hard to get away as the line. And now, top side, Fermi. Rupture around. The Icarus Dive might be enough, but the Blood Rite is coming. He will have to commit the Egg. He'll survive, but it will cost him that long cooldown. No Egg for another two minutes here for Boomy. Because on the brighter side, they won't give the kill away to KP. Yeah, I think you're I think you're perfectly fine with that honestly. Like we haven't really seen Dyer's big eggs, big engagements out from TNC. And as you mentioned, they've just been a lot more keen on farming. Maybe a couple of pickoffs here and there, but no giant team fight. You can really leverage the egg. And in that sense, just saving yourself isn't too bad of a use if you're not expecting to fight anyway. And still seeing the network even kill board 4-7, a bit of a slower game here. 
as much slower than we're used to seeing from Southeast Asia, but relatively even. I think both teams, it's one of those games where it's like a spring that's really wound up. The moment it pops, either side could just have a massive, massive lead on hand. So we're just waiting for that big moment. For the most part, uh, we're seeing some conditions come out. S and Y up on our Terrorblade means that staff resist is going to feel a lot better, more strength on hand to be durable up front, but our Medusa is inching closer and closer towards the Axe. Right, mid one has the Manta, is about 2k away, 2.1k away from the full Aghanims up, and that's when the Medusa feels extremely obnoxious. No BKBs in sight for TNZ just yet. Gabby is going to be rushing one next, but if that Axe comes out before the BKB does, it's going to be a bit troublesome there for the TV once that stone form comes out. Absolutely. Mid one getting to work. Up that Aghanim Scepter. They do also have a Grove Ball on the side of SMG. I, I believe it was dropped if they want to try and use it, but now he'll just ignore that. Right. Our scan. This should be more than numbers. Top lane, KP, gonna get caught out with the Dragon Tail and with the Ink Swap follow up, it'll be more than enough. Take him down and Gabby. Just a couple gold ahead of mid one, but they are kind Radiance of just going back and forth. Under attack. Top of that net worth for a very, very close attack. game three and. Of course, for either side, you don't really want to have to get knocked to the lower bracket in the first round of the playoff, but that's unfortunately how it's going to be, is now they've found Arfu on the task. Another kill off the back of Arnold's puck. See, they'll continue to be the more aggressive team, Radiant's at least for now. They head towards the bot tier, oh, excuse me, the top tier top one tower. Radiant, the Roshan is going to be open for them as well, if they so wish. You have the meta up. Radiance top they can, tower has fallen. They can look for that quick rush if they want. What I'm more surprised by is SMG's movements. Like they were shoving in the bot lane. Do you think they haven't taken that mid tier one? Which is something we've been talking about a long time, especially with Slush Rack for Moon. They haven't found that big objective and it's just allowed much of that uh, dire side of the map for TNC to stay uncontested. Stable farm for the Terrorblade coming through, recovery coming out for Bok, and highly effective for this Blink. DKB's up next as well for the DK. Our Melt's been allowed to finish up his travels in Blink, so the puck's a lot more mobile as well, and he's jumping in. Amel, he's right in. Roggy, gonna die immediately as our food goes for the Warrus Punch, but the orb out from Armel. It's gonna mean they can't quite catch him. He is 7-0-2 now on this puck. A classic performance from the Armel puck, of course. And it's going to be a very, very pesky kind of hero as KP does rotate down towards the bot lane. But Armel making so much space with these rotations from SMG. Not giving them the time of the day. Right out. Just a hit and run for our mill, buying out a ton of space. It forces so many heroes to try and chase him down. A lot of uh, TPs onto that tier two tower to just cut their losses and maybe find some punishment, but they end up just sort of wasting time. So it's only the Deucer that gets to build up Radiant's steadily in the jungle. Now the good news tower. is that mid one's Ags is just about Dyer's 430 gold off, so not too long till that spike is up. And that is going to be before the BKBs come out for TNC, just by a small margin. So you might have to look into using that while it's still highly effective. And they are lining up for that mid-tier one push right now, at least. Yeah. Well, they were. Back off. Very intimidating to go into the side of TNC. You know how far Gabby is right now on this Terra Blade, and I don't think he'd really mind going for a big team fight if he needed to. With SMG, they'll have a quick peek into the Roshan and see nothing. Radiance bottom tower. Up through that side, jungle just trying to wrap around back into that mid lane, but who are they going to find? Bok is showing, but Arno is the much bigger target if they can catch him. Bok, he might prove to be a little bit too tanky. In fact, now he jumps in looking for a dragon tail. They'll get the hex out into the Warren's punch. Sunray is keeping him alive, but he's been ruptured up. He cannot run, but doesn't matter. They found our food for the sake of the DK, and now Moon goes down as well. KP, he's gonna try and run, but it looks like he is set to die and does. All right. Moony with that Sunray just, it felt like he kept Bok around for so much longer than he should have been alive. And TNT, he just got the damage out and immediately jumped there into the Roshan pit. This is just perfect coming out. From TNC, there are no ways one. for SMG to feel well. The one straight runs in, 
Hanley kind of play here from mid one. Happy Agonim Sephiroth as well, don't forget. So he is feeling quite confident on this hero and surprisingly enough, just his presence alone will force back the side of TNC. Uh, I kind of like seeing that conservative play. Challenging. You want to catch this puck and even being able to throw it the way of one of your teammates just to be able to help them avoid something like the rupture. Quite impactful is now SMG. They're going to be the ones to go into the Roshan pit. He's still roughly half HP in mid one. He'll get started. You can see, they should be aware that this is happening. They did have vision. How are they going to try and fight this? With the sun ray and the reflection, it'll force them out of the pit. They're going right back in mid one. He wants to fight. That team up. R2 going to get started. Mumi going to be fourth back. Magatel is out. Moon, he went too far. Snowball, though, is going to save R2. We'll buy some time. They're just no gates out as well. They're right in. On to the DK. Bok is dropping quite low on Wultai. A great start to the fight. This SMG are back into the Roshan. Meanwhile, R Novo. Does end up killing off KB, but he does die for the first time this game as TNC. They are still trying to fight this one out. Moon, he'll hold the back to the one with our fourth mid one. He'll get the Roshan done, and now Gabby, he'll go for a Sunder, but he is really just stuck between all the side of SMG. He's going to go down. Bit of a, a panic Roshan attempt from TNC, and really just does not work out in their favor. They weren't ready for that fight, did he? Moon's still going. He wants Tims on the Grimstroke. He won't be able to keep up with him though, so Tims is going to be all right, but they'll get the mid tier one tower instead. Yeah, that's been way overdue here for SMG. It's uh, 24 minutes in for the mid tier one. A bit slow, but they find it eventually, and they have Roshan on hand. TNC, that was a really awkward fight. They had no egg, they had no dragon form, they had no metamorphosis, they only had Dream Quill to play with, and it's just not enough. Uh, RML kind of overextending there as well is not great. He loses a massive streak out just for that kill on KP. Much bigger win for SMG. And Money this is the point hands. where it starts to get pretty scary. Mid one's building into the Scotty once more. The Deuce is starting to build up. The Bloodseeker with his Solar Crest can just really run around and pick off the back lines if you're not careful. And the magic output of Moon with Akai Assange and Eternal Trout to tank up is significant. So TNC's got to be really cautious and think about when they take these fights. If their spells aren't up, chances are SMG yeah, can just run you down. He smoked up. Gonna find a Bok. He's gonna break the smoke and Roger. He's got it with the Hex out on the Warrus Punch. They lock him down and Bok, he's got no help around him. So he's just kind of forced to die. Moon on the left track. SMG, they're starting to look like they're in control of this game Dyer's number three. Get to work into that top tier three tower and TNC, they do not want a bar of SMG right now. Radiant's yeah, bottom tower is got under to play attack. safe. Uh, they are getting a bit of a chase in our mill, but he does manage to zip away as the puck. It's very slippery here to catch. Top. There is some space here for TNC to try to trade that bot to you two for their top. And they are getting some good damage out. They've got the Siege Creep on hand. The Illusion Fan coming out from the Terrible it is pretty nice as well. They should at Radiant's least get this sort of consolation prize on the tier 2. Maybe even get the Outpost if you want to deny some XP per minute away from SMG. SMG for their part, Aegis, they've got a lot of time in it left. About, uh, two, I don't know, like two minutes, two and a half minutes left on that Aegis. So a lot of time for mid one to be protected. And going for the direct Dyer's tower tree tower doesn't hurt them too much. Gone. It's much more painful now for TNC. We still need to hit BKBs on Bok. Uh, they need that uh, burst damage on Armel going for the Radiant's Dagon build up on Puck as well. And that's still a long way off until you get Dagon 5, or at least Dagon 3 here. Really burst them heroes down. It's going to be a while longer, and TNC needs more time to farm up, but. Now you're starting to trade farm with a really big Medusa, and that, that's just never a great feeling, especially after what we saw in game two. Certainly not. Let's see, back to the drawing board, it seems like, is Gabby. He's just trying to get that Eye of Scotty up, but it's going to be a while away. But mid one with his own Eye of Scotty coming out very, very soon, and so many issues getting into that back line and dealing with mid one. It would be very annoying with that stone gaze and the Aghanim Scepter Mystic Snake. 
Because you can play the split push game here for TNC. You do still have the Park, who's one of the better split pushers in the game. Moon, a run right into Gabby. They'll be able to potentially find a killer as Moon is going to try and fight this one out, but Silence there, and the Dream could have locked him down. There wasn't much he could have done. Just of TNC trying to find a few more heroes to try and pick off, but nobody going to be around here from SMG. Everyone backs out again. TNC looks like they'll accept what they get and back off, but it's not really the, the prize target you want, right? Like, you really want that Medusa if you can find her. Mid one's still just not giving them any openings. He's just playing in the back, playing in the jungle, really safe. He's always got support to watch his back as well, so it's not the target can easily jump, but TNC has some good items. They have the BKB on Bok and the Ags is up on Tim's. So they've got the Dark Portrait. That big farmed Medusa can turn against them. And we've seen this Dark Portrait really cause issues for a lot of teams. It's almost like a Nyx with Axe, right? Like once you have that Burrow, all the added spells you have can be obnoxious. This illusion's just really, really, really annoying to deal with. And you're gonna have to watch yourself on SMG now once it's out. You might want to try to commit with Raji to take it out instead, but it still is gonna be a big factor as long as Tims finds the right target to get the portrait of. Pushing here by Armel. SMG gonna start invading that dire di jungle again. Dyer's trying to find out where the side of TNC are and Dyer's we're gonna find a courier for their trouble. Who gives the Walrus Punch over to the courier of Armel. Take the outpost back as well. Of course, TNC just completely unwilling to start a fight. These 5v5 is Rodgy. Trying to find Armel in the park, but... Gotta get the hex off. Meanwhile, mid lane, Boomy. Just fine. Now Timpy does have that ink portrait up. You actually have to commit quite a lot to just try and burst Radiant's it down. Bottom tower is under attack. That's gonna be a big factor, John. Like, against Medusa, it's not necessarily one of those heroes that you think about when you think of the Grimstroke ink portrait. It was rather tanky, I must say, and I suppose if it's left alone long enough, it will do a substantial amount of damage. You think maybe that's the key here for TNC? Die. Definitely, it's going to be a big factor. You're always going to have a good source of damage just flying out. Mid one doesn't do the most damage yet, but as he builds up on items, it's just going to work against him. He's not careful, so SMP has to be always sort of aware of where the uh, Grim Strokes kind of positioning himself, of what he uses that Dark Portrait of. A soul buying Dark Portrait would be really annoying. So look at that. Tim's just microing, cutting off the creep wave, preventing any push opportunities, clearing out the creep wave by himself. It's fine. Beautiful. Great hero. It's balanced. Very balanced. TNC. Look up. R2 gonna run right into him. Just break the smoke. But Armel gonna move forward with a nice stream call. Catching out Moon. Are they gonna go after the match track? They'll try to focus in onto mid one. But mid one, he's gonna be just fine. Instead, they'll commit the egg. They'll continue the fight onto R2. See, we'll go down the task. But now the buyback's there. R2. He wants to come back in and try and stop this team fight again as mid one. He'll go onto Bok. They'll find the Dragon Knight and they'll take down the DK. So Armel, he's back in on the backside. He does kill off the Lash. Aim down Tim's. Gabby, he's trying to get to work with the hexes out. They've got the Earth Spike as well, and they might just have enough control to take down this TB. Or do they? He still has the Sunder. He'll get it off. He'll turn back around. It'll be a dieback on R2. Now mid one. He needs to get out of there. Oh no, even finding Roddy in the backside. They do get the Medusa away. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. TNC. They just prolong the team fight long enough and. This time around, it does work out in their favor. Middle tower has Fishing was just on point. They put the DK all up front. Mid one's gonna have to shove this wave back by himself, which he can do. It's a Dusa. Can really split shot quite nicely and still really annoying to deal with for most of these heroes. But you're seeing the conditions come out for TNC. They're allowed to sustain 
with Boomy, as long as his position is good for the Sunray, it's very hard to burst down these years. Even with that Scotty up on mid one, it's just a pain to still deal with all that heal coming through from the Phoenix. And the damage output of Gabby is just greater than Medusa right now with the itemization. Like Scotty's up, Dragonlance and DKD, but he's got Crystalis, he's got the SNY for uh, faster attack speed as well. Once you have the full Daedalus up on Gabby, as long as he's got Metamorphosis to play with, the deuce is not going to feel great up front, and mid one's actually going for the MKB and sort of uh, expect expectations of the butterfly for Gabby, but he's just not even bothering. So that MKB, the ex the attack speed will be nice, but your true strike's not going to matter because you're kind of building a counter pick for an item that's not even coming out on this Terrorblade anywhere. Well, I'm also concerned about what you pointed out earlier, John. The the more damage items mid one gets, the more that ink portrait's going to do. With that MKB up, it's it's going to be a lot more painful for SMD, for SMD to try and deal with that uh, that ink portrait coming out from Tim's. A little bit concerned here for SMG as, as the game does go on. A 5k net worth lead now for TNC Predator. It's still a rather close game between the two and could go any way. Feels like this uh, this game is kind of be banking on the, the next Roshan, which is up by the way. SMD already kind of posturing around it, getting the vision of that Roshan. So important for both teams to try and secure that second Roshan with the Aegis Cheese and Shards. And mid one, he's already getting started. An Ink Portrait though, gonna scout it out. You've also got that Daedalus now onto Gabby. Dive are scanning. SMG, play it safe, they'll back out of it. That's uh good call they don't really have the best vision to take the roach right now no forward wards the spot where tnc is and tnc well they're under a smoke right now they could look to play into that high ground here one. he does not want to be caught like this with the sun ray and the dragon fell right on top still he got the stone gaze off in time so he can try to back off and down the soul bind locking him down and look at the damage output oh, gabby just God. rips it to shreds onto the blood seeker kp has gone armel has got the backside he'll kill off roji and now moon he's gonna try and run but he has been left all by himself oh, go get him oh what kind of damage was that from gabby Daedalus, man. It's it's the itemization compared to the Dusa. The Dusa going for that anti It's just not enough damage, and it's not it's not any more durability as well for the Dusa to stand and fight. It's just not panning out, and they, they have to put that Dusa up front as well. It's their tankiest hero, Radiance the one that can take all the hits. You don't really want your Bloodseeker up front, and that just puts you at massive risk. They managed to get the initiation they want. They, I think they kind of focused on Armel on the low ground, but they didn't expect everyone else to swing in from that southern ramp, and it just kind of cost them. High ground under siege, Aegis Cheese, free Ag Shard up. It's really scary to fight into this. They don't even have the stone gaze just yet, although it should be up by the time the respawns there. But these objectives will not hold for too long. They won't get mid the creeps up as the tier 2 top is still standing. But two lanes of racks down, it tends to be a bit more annoying for SMG to keep these gigs shoved out. The racks is down now for SMG as the second does get taken by Gabby as we speak. Icarus Dive gonna find out our food. Green Coil there, they wanna just take the tusk out of the team fight immediately. Ooh. They do break the coil. King Swell right Ooh. behind by Fox. Take him out. Our food down with our buyback again. Can't see. Secondary rap, Scabby. Has the Aegis, but there's your soul by now. In fact, they might just try and turn around and fight this. Roddy's already gone down. Down the sun around mid one. Oh no. He's dead with our buyback. Oh, boy. Oh, it's a disaster here, John. TNC. Really hard. They're going over the team falls now. Roddy, he's trying to get something done with the finger out. They're going off the arm, though, but he is still alive. He'll get the phase shift off with the all down below from a moon. He will secure the kill, but doesn't matter. They are getting completely wiped, and they call the GG. TNC. He just turned right back around and, and take game three off the side of SMG. Yeah, it looked really even for a long time, but...